Hello and welcome to another Zack Carnage video and this time we're going to be talking about Praetorians, the track Praetorians, the ultimate guardians of the Necron law and their rites of passage. Uh, these guys have been around enacting the uh, work of the Silent King for countless millennia. Um, watching all of the tombs and now they're going around and waking everyone up so that they can continue their work. Um, and we're going to be discussing why I think, personally, uh, that they are better than Lichgard. And then we're going to show you that um, using uh, some mathematical mumbo-jumbo. Um, and more than that, uh, we're going to be discussing psychological aspects of playing these guys. Uh, so, let's get into it. So the two key things to note... Uh, whenever you're picking a unit is you need to know what you're up against and you need to know what you can actually do with your unit. Um, so let's discuss this unit as a whole first. Um, it's a very, very simple um, basic stat line unit with additional strength, toughness, um, and obviously they're essentially all carrying special and vulnerable saves in the forms of reanimation protocols. Uh, these guys have Rods of Covenant, uh, which are AP2, um, dealing vast amounts of damage. They're essentially pistols um, that they can then charge in with and then do some serious slashing uh, with in the assault phase. Uh, and they're also jump infantry, so they can get around really, really quickly. Um, keep in mind that uh, you can make the best use of these in the assault by doing the Hammer of Wrath, but that means you can only move six inches during the movement phase, so it depends what you want to do with these guys. Um, they're quite a hefty cost uh, for taking over objectives, um, but then you can just put them in units of five because these guys are fearless, so they're not going to be running away uh, when they lose a couple of guys. Um, and to be honest, you're not going to lose that many thanks to RP rolls. Um, because they move so fast, and you can hide them behind buildings very easily, uh, move them around really quickly and hopefully they won't have lost any guys before you actually enter the combat um, which can make them very very effective uh, so a large part of this discussion is that um, I know generally the community loves Lich Guard uh, and it's understandable why you can give them 3 plus plus with the dispersion shields they've still got AP3 weapons uh, you can take them in 10 give them a uh, and stick them in a, a night size so you can drop them off anywhere on the battlefield really quickly uh, deploy and assault as soon as possible um, the major issues with this are that uh, when you drop them off they can't assault that turn um, so this really reduces their ability so basically you wait until turn 2 for your flyer to come on um, and then you have to move and then you have to drop them off and then you have to hope that they don't take too much damage but to be fair they're ledge guards so they're not going to take it um, it's a lot of points though uh, once you put in the dispersion shields and uh, hyperphase swords uh, and then it's even more to protect them properly because what you'd want to do to make them really really invincible is give them a cryptic with the solar stuff uh, and that does make an incredibly un, uh, just hard to kill unit um, so if that's all you want, if you just want a unit that can eat up tons and tons of shots and attacks, uh, then go for it, you know, just chuck the ledge guard in. Uh, but that's not what I wanted to do with them. Um, to be honest, uh, I would always rather run ledge guard with war sides because I want to be able to get those AP2 hits in because I want my units to be killing elite units. I don't want it to just be a, a random marine troop killer. Uh, and <laughs> I'm going to show you... A bit later why uh, th they're actually not any good at killing the standard troops um, these guys are still better at it to be honest um, and okay so yeah that's that's why I don't like the Lich Guard so much so why do I like the Praetorians uh, they move faster um, AP2 weapons we, we're not even gonna bother um, discussing the fact that you don't want to take uh, the Void Blades and stuff, we're not we're not even going to think about those, we're only thinking about Rods of the Covenant because they are the better choice um, thanks to the updates to the rules. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a quick look at the maths uh, before we talk about psychology. Okay, so starting off, um, I am currently studying for a physics degree at the University of Oxford. And clearly the only possible way to use an intellect like mine is to calculate basic probability that 
basically anyone who's studied GCSE can do. Uh, you don't even have to do GCSE, you could probably understand this all already. Uh, and keep in mind that because I am an Oxford physicist, my handwriting is terrible. Um, so here we're going to go through some basic probabilities of the wounds that you would inflict if you take five Triarch Praetorians with Rods of the Covenant, pit them against Space Marines, um, and they're going to go in this turn, they're going to walk normally, um, they're going to use the shooting attacks with uh, their Rose of the Covenant, and then they're going to use the jump packs to do the assault. Um, now keep in mind that I've separated all of these sections, so even if you don't want to include charge attacks, even if you don't want to include Hammer of Wrath attacks, and if for some reason you don't do the shooting, uh, we can still just look at the normal attacks that they get in. Um, so starting off, you're shooting, you're going to be doing 5 attacks, uh, you're hitting on 3, so which gives you a 4 out of 6 chance of hitting, uh, you have a strength 5 against toughness 4 against space marines, so 4 out of 6 again gives 20 over 9, and that's about 2.2 wounds just from shooting. Um, which is fair, you know, if you go against a unit of space marines, what's the chance that they're going to be 10 anymore? Uh, most of the days they're probably 5 and chucked into a rhino or something, so if they get out, this is what you're going to be doing against them. Uh, moving into the assault, if you include the Hammer of Wrath, you're going to be getting an additional 1.1 wounds on the space marines, um, that's the five attacks which automatically hit, uh, you'll end wounding on threes, uh, but they will get their three plus armor save, so only two out of six of your attacks are going to go through. Uh, moving on to the charge attacks, this is just the bonus from actually getting the charge this turn, uh, so you have to discount this from every subsequent turn in the assault, uh, but this goes up to about 1.7 attacks, uh, which you get in which wound, and um, that's Keep in mind, all of this accounts for armor saves, um, but they're not going to be taking any against your Rods of Covenant, which is what makes them so amazing. Uh, and then your normal attacks, so this is what you get every turn in the Assault Phase. Uh, provided all of your guys are alive, you're going to be getting 3.3 attacks on. Now, I did not include the effects of the average Space Marine kill ratio. Um, I didn't really want to include it. To be fair, uh, the, you're probably going to lose one, maybe more, guys uh, from the Space Marine attacks. Uh, but your Hammer of Wrath will always get him first, your shooting will always get him first, so it's only the charge and the normal attacks which are affected by this. Um, but provided all of your guys survive, which, I mean, <laughs> the Necrons are probably going to survive, uh, you're likely to inflict um, around 8.3 wounds. Uh, so you're going to take down roughly 8 guys in this single turn uh, of Assault, which is absolutely key because that means you can wipe out a single unit of Space Marines in one go, provided you roll okay for your saves. Um, and that's that's all it takes. Uh, so then we're going to be doing a direct comparison of what the Lich Guard would do. Uh, now obviously they have a much smaller section, um, because they don't get the shooting or the Hammer of Wrath. They literally have to walk, so you have to hope that your enemy uh, stays close enough for you to walk into combat with them, basically. Um, so again, Lich Guard versus Space Marines, and this time, Space Marines! Space Marines! So this time we're going to be doing uh, War Sides. Uh, so the charge attacks, uh, you get your 5 attacks, uh, weapon skill is 4 against 4, so you hit half the time, uh, and then you're at strength 7, so you're going to be hitting 5 out of 6 of the time, uh, 5 six of the time with your war sights, uh, which leads to 25 over 12, or around 2.1 wounds that you inflict from that. Your normal attacks is just double that, so you get 4.2 from that, which gives an average of 6.3 wounds. So again, if you're putting these guys against 5 basic space marines, although... <laughs> It's a bit of a strange points ratio at that case when you're pitting five Lich Guard against five normal Space Marines. Um, but you're going to be predictably wiping out the entire unit in this case. Uh, moving over to Hyperphase Swords, uh, and this is why, this is going to show you why I don't like them uh, when we move on uh, to more elite units. So we start off with uh, Hyperphase Swords, the charge attacks, you're going to get 1.7 in, uh, roughly. Uh, double that for your normal attacks is 3.3, and then... Um, so this is, you can follow it on, it's, it's the same uh, number of attacks, the same weapon skill, but then your strength is slightly lower and no armor saves, as you can see. Um, so on average, you're going to be taking out a unit of five Space Marines, absolutely fine, you know, um, no problem with that. If you want to put five Lich Guard against five Space Marines and um, provided all of your guys survive, then this is on average what you would do. So this can fluctuate up and down. Um, you know, it's it's not determined that you're definitely going to get five in any of the probabilities. Um, but that is what you're likely to get five wounds with five Lithgard. It really doesn't seem worth it for me. Uh, and it's going to be shown even more when we move on to the more elite units. So now we're going to be doing a contrast of what would happen if you were to pit your five Triarch Praetorians with Rosa the Covenant against Terminators. Um, so Terminators have a two up, five up... Um, 
on average. Uh, this is just for basic ones, we're not going to go into stat boosted ones or anything. Uh, so you start off with your shooting. Um, again, because they have the base stat line, um, you're going to be hitting a three, um, you're hitting on threes, so four out of six of the time you hit, uh, four out of six of the time you wound, four out of six of the time um, they make their Sorry, four, four out of six of the time, they fail their invulnerable save. Uh, so you get an average of 40 out of 27, which is about one and a half wounds from shooting. Uh, moving on to Hammer of Wrath, you get another 0.6 from that. It's not a lot, but then they do get the two plus arm save. So you, you, you the number of wounds you inflict goes down to a sixth of what it originally was. Um, your charge attacks are going to be doing about 1.1 wounds from that. And then your normal attacks double it again, you know, so um, 2.2 from that. Um, and this equates to 5.4 wounds on average. So this includes all of the charging stuff. So after your first turn in the combat, you're going to be doing an average of only 2.2 wounds every combat. Um, but if you can do 5.4 against a unit of 5 Terminators, that is absolutely fantastic. And if they're all Terminators with Power Fist, this, is, this actually is... Um, the average that you would get, because obviously none of this stuff accounts for your guys dying. But if they've got Power Fists, uh, then all of your attacks happen before theirs. Uh, obviously the Hammer of Wrath would happen anyway, but you're Initiative 2, so all of this stuff is going to go through before their Power Fist. Um, which means you can potentially wipe out the entire unit uh, <laughs> before they even get to do anything. Uh, which makes them insanely good. Um, this, remember, this is just five of them, and keep in mind you can run them as a unit of ten, um, or you could just multi-assault if you really want to. Uh, and then we're going to do the comparison of why why the Lich Guard just don't do so well. Um, mainly with the Hyperface Swords, that's my issue. Uh, with the War Sides, uh, it's not too bad. Um, so we've got the War Sides, you're going to be hitting five times from your charge. Um, weapon skills four versus four, you hit half the time. Uh, your strength seven, so you get your five out of six. But then they get their uh, invulnerable save, so four out of six of your attacks get through. It's about 1.4. Um, and then they're just Lich Guards, so you're just going to be doubling it for the normal attacks, which is another 2.8. So you do around 4.2 wounds, and then one of your guys gets hit with a Power Fist and goes down. Uh, so then next turn you're going to be doing less than 2.8. But you can probably wipe out the unit within two turns, uh, which is pretty decent. Um, but then the issue that I really, really have is uh, Hyperface Swords. And this this is why. Okay, so... um. Oh god, this is awful. Okay, so you make your five attacks. Again, the same uh, hit on three, um, four ups. Uh, you're, no, uh, you're now only wounding on four out of six instead of the five out of six because the strength is only at five still. And then they get their two plus armor save. So five out of six of your attacks don't go through. And you, you do an average of 0.3 attacks from the charge. 0.3 wounds, sorry. Um, with a war size, you would have been doing 1.4. The... the it's terrible. You, you're, you're highly unlikely to kill a single guy on the charged attacks. Then moving on to the normal attacks, you just double it again. Um, because you're, you're doing 10 instead of the, um, the 5 attacks from the charge. And you do an average of 0.6 wounds every, um, every turn that you're in combat using hyperface swords against terminators. Keep in mind, you're, you're playing an elite assault unit. They're meant to be there to, to kill big enemies, you know. Um, if you're going up against space marines, they're meant to be able to kill Terminators. They're meant to be able to kill characters in, um... What, what's the armor? Is it Artificial Armor? I, I, I can't remember. I haven't played Marines in a long time. Um, but Terminator Armor, or any, any decent armor with a 2 plus armor save, they just can't cut it. They really can't, because the 2 plus armor save massively knocks down the amount of wounds you can do. And so they do an average of 0.8 wounds on the first turn. That's, that's like, you're basically going to kill one guy on your first turn of Assault, unless you're really lucky with the dice. Um, so this is just, obviously this is all working from probability, so you could realistically roll and kill all of them, but it's so unlikely that it's not something that I can consistently count on, which is why I have to go with the, the Triarch Praetorians, because as we saw, they would do 5.4 wounds. They're likely to wipe out the entire unit. The, the Lich Guard with the Hyperface Swords are not likely to do... And barely anything. They're going to kill one guy every turn. You aren't going to have them there for enough turns to even wipe out the unit. Because they come in on turn 2. At best, they're going to be assaulting on turn 2. They're much more likely to be assaulting on turn 3. And then you kill, at most, about one guy. Um, 
on the first turn and then half a guy on the, the following turn, so you're not going to kill an entire unit. And but worse, if uh, if you go up against something that's got hit and run, they're just going to leave it. I mean, they're fine against killing normal marines. You know, 4.2 isn't too bad. Um, oh, sorry, this is um, this is for war size. War size are great. You use the war size against the terminators. Yet you're, <laughs> you're taking out four guys every turn. Uh, four guys in the first turn, and then another three on every other turn. Um, and if you pin them against normal marines, it's fine. Um, because with the hyperface swords, you're still doing five wounds on the on the first turn, and then another three every other turn. That's not too bad. But the amount of points that you're putting into this unit for way too little is just really not worth it. So I would always go with the the Triarch Praetorians with the Rosa Covenant. And just from the, after reviewing this, um, if I actually want the unit to do anything decent, I'm gonna have to go with the Triarch Praetorians because. Not only are they fastest, they can actually get to the unit and catch up with them, unlike Lich Guard, who would have to walk after your opponents. But they can actually do some damage consistently, whereas the Lich Guard have to just roll really well. Um, <laughs> so that is the statistical point of view on why I would take Praetorians over Lich Guard. Okay, so you have now seen the numbers, and um, hopefully you're starting to get a grasp of why I like these guys much more than Lich Guard. Um, but now we're going to be talking about actual gameplay and a little bit about the psychology of using these guys over Lich Guard. Um, so first off, a really key point is that these guys are the jump infantry. Again, I know I've mentioned that they're fast. It's good. Lich Guard's slow, not so good. Um, again, people say, you know, pay uh, however many points it is for a night size, get them flying across the board. They're fast again, right? But no, because you drop them off and then they can't move the first turn, so your enemy moves six away or... More than likely, they're going to be in tanks, and they're going to move fast. Um, so, obviously, these guys can't cut through tanks. Um, so what you want to do is generally keep them back and head after um, any stray units of um, whatever's lying around that isn't going to bog these guys down for too long. You know, you want to hit small units hard and fast and take them out and then leave um, as quickly as possible. Um, and preferably send them off to the elite units because that's where their AP2 weapons really shine and your opponent's suddenly like, oh, I've, I've wasted all of these points on 2 plus armor saves for no reason. Um, that's what you want to do with them. Um, deep striking is an option, uh, but it's not one that I would recommend. Um, if you deep strike, obviously you're only going to be able to shoot. It's lucky that they do have the shooting option uh, to help you with that. Uh, but they can only sit, hit stuff within 12, which isn't too bad, um, depending on how much you want to do with them. Uh, whereas uh, a much better deep striking unit would of course be death marks because of all of their incredible <laughs> space rulery um, Which just makes them absolute monsters whereas these guys uh, Honestly, they are much better if you can actually just assault with them on the first turn that you actually want to do damage because they will do so much more um, If you're the one charging in with the assault, uh, I honestly can't recommend it enough that you want these guys to be on the field at the start, keep them in cover, make sure they don't get shot or seen, you know, preferably, um, and then send them in and wipe out units. Uh, don't make the mistake that I made in the initial uh, tryout of these guys, because I was playing these guys back in 5th edition. Um, my first test of them, I played 5, uh, and I moved them into uh, some terrain, um, and then I think I lost one of them uh, to the terrain and then they were bogged down and they couldn't get out of it and they took a whole lot of shots um, and they just didn't um, they didn't actually manage to do anything I think I had two left before I managed to reach my opponent uh, so use cover really wisely obviously there's a lot of cover available in 7th edition uh, the current edition that we're in now we're seeing a lot of really fast armies um, so if you're going against you know Tau, uh, chances are they're all going to be battle suits or guys in Devilfish. Um, Space Marines, Chaos Marines, they often just pile everything into Rhinos because Rhinos are so stupidly cheap that uh, it's always worth having Rhinos. Um, or Land Raiders, even. Uh, and that is another point where people will say take Lich Guard with War Sites because they can cut through the tanks. Uh, but I think Gamza made a really good point about this, which is just that. Um, who on earth would leave a tank for you to walk six inches and then be able to assault with Lich Guard into it uh, with war sites? You know, they're going to see this unit coming. There is no way for you to possibly avoid that. Even if you drop them off with the night side, they then have that turn to, if they want, move flat out and get right out the way. Um, 
So then, tactically, that is where the Lich card can do something, is that they can drop onto the field and just push all of your opponent's models away from the middle. Uh, but, to be honest, your opponent could just shoot your Lich card to death, um, provided you don't have the solar staff, and then you've wasted a lot of points. Um, but a good opponent will not shoot at Lich Guard with Dispersion Shields, because they know it's a waste of uh, firepower. Um, these guys, uh, not only do they cost less, even uh, when you have the best version of the unit, which is with the Rods of the Covenant, uh, the Lich Guard, um, but they're going to be faster, they're going to do more damage, um, and far speed is really, really key in uh, the current game. Um, that is why Tomb Blades are actually really good. Uh, and it's also why destroyers are actually fairly good as well. Uh, it's just the ability to be able to take objectives very quickly. Um, and it's something that makes armies like Eldar and Tau uh, incredibly good um, when they can do their thing properly. Um, Tau especially, because not only do they have long range weapons, but they also have very fast vehicles. So they'll be able to drop onto objectives and things. And that is something that Necron players, I, I know generally, if you want to follow the fluff, we're a very slow based army. Um, Fluff based armies are just spammed with warriors and stuff, and uh, they're just going to be standing around, um, gradually moving up the field, and the idea is to overwhelm with numbers. But that is something that doesn't work so well in the, uh, the current game. Um, not because numbers aren't great, uh, but because you don't have the time to get across the field. Um, remember, this the, the game that we play is actually very short. Uh, I know it feels like a long time. Um, when you're done with it, because obviously it's it's something like uh, two and a half hours for a game, um, roughly, depending on how many points you play. But then, keep in mind, it's only six turns um, on average, so you're not that likely to be able to uh, actually do as much as you probably want to do with your army. So, um, these guys, take them because they're fast, they're powerful, uh, they're hard-hitting and versatile, and... You know, they're Necrons, they're still survivable. If, even if they don't have an Invulnerable, they have a uh, four up in a Decurion, which is fantastic. As always, thank you for watching this video. Uh, hopefully you haven't been bored by the maths or how incredibly long this video has turned out to be, I've only just realized. Um, but uh, hopefully some of this information that I've imparted has been useful to you. Don't forget to leave any comments or suggestions that you have in the comments section down below. Uh, stay tuned for my battle report versus Jason Pryor, which will hopefully be coming up this February. Um, I'm going to be really excited to see uh, what he's bringing. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to play these guys yet. Um, it depends on how I end up building the army list. Uh, but I definitely want to try these guys out beforehand. Um, uh, we're playing 1500 points, so... In. Uh, they may or may not go in. Uh, it really depends on how much I plan on bringing. Uh, as always, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.